So an update, the tree that fell down and crushed my boat also ended up crushing my tent. Hey folks, it's Bill Swift from Swift Canoe and we've got a fascinating fellow here and a fascinating story and we think you're going to love it. This is Ken Davey from Brampton, Ontario. Hello Bill, how are you? Welcome. I'm doing great and after hearing your story, I, we felt it was important to share it with everyone out there. Ken, how did you find out about Swift Canoe and what led you to the Prospector 15? Well, Bill, I started uh, camping and canoeing in Algonquin Park several years ago. Uh, I rented the canoes from different uh, locations, and I found that the uh, Swift Canoe was an excellent boat that just seemed to be the right size, the right weight. And uh, in the fall of last year, I came back to the Swift Canoe up on Oxtongue, and I wanted to try out a variety of pack boats, solo boats, and um, after trying the pack boats, um, I felt a little bit unsteady in them. But when I tried out the, the, uh, the combi, the 15 foot prospector combi, it was just perfect. It was the canoe. I knew immediately that it was the right one. We often tell people when you come up and do your test paddling that the canoe of your choice is going to speak to you. It's going to tell you. Yes. It, this is the one. It definitely did. It, it, was, it was definitely the one uh, I felt comfortable. I was able to move around in it without it being tippy. It was very stable, uh, which is what I was really looking for. It, and it also had the light weight, you know, under, under 40 pounds. It was, it was just perfect for what I was looking for. So last October, you yep. ordered a beautiful Carbon Fusion Prospector 15, a combi actually. You got the yes. centered seat. The carbon Kevlar trim, beautiful boat. You specced it all out. Yep. And then in April you came and tell us when you came and picked the, the boat up, what that was like. Well, that was a, that was a, a great day for myself. Uh, I brought my wife up. She doesn't normally come up north uh, with me at all. So this was a special event for, for both of us. We spent the night uh, nearby and I came in in the morning and I was able to inspect the, my new boat. It was beautiful, it was shiny. Uh, it was just the right boat. Um, I got it set up uh, on top of the, can, on the car and um, put the cover on it and it was all set to go. It was perfect. It's a nice feeling getting a brand yeah. new boat. <laughs> not, not, a, not a single scratch or ding in it at that time. <laughs> it was perfect. So when did you first use the boat? So the, I first used the boat in May in, at the Frontenac Provincial Park. Uh, I wanted to give it a test run um, with, the, uh, with multiple portages. Uh, so I went in for a weekend, uh, did uh, four, five portages, uh, basically four kilometers of portaging uh, in a day. And it, uh, it really performed very well. It was, those are difficult portages, steep, rocky. Um, and the boat, it's well balanced with the, with the uh, removable yoke. It was, it's in a perfect place for it. So I was really, really happy with the outcome of, of my selection. Now, I'm sure this happened to you on your trip. Everyone has the experience of putting the first scratch in the boat. What, what was that like when uh, you just heard the sound? And yes, it yes, that, that, that's the, the nails on the blackboard sound and feel. <laughs> and I just really could not, uh, I, I knew I could not avoid it. It was going to happen. So the first one is always the worst. And then I always, after that, I just said, okay, I'm going to be as super careful as I can to, to minimize it. But it's part of the it's part of the boat it's part of the adventure really we, we always tell people that when you get the scratches on the bottom they're character marks and the more character marks you put on your boat the better life the boat's living but i i know that feeling of the first scratch it's not fun yeah, yeah it was really good it was a it was a it was a good trip it was an excellent uh, trial for the boat and i worked it worked out very well so then you had another trip and that's the yeah. trip that we're really going to tell a story about. So, folks, we're going to switch the canoes here real quick and come back to it. So, Ken, this is your beautiful new Swift canoe. After the trip we're going to talk about. 
So folks, you're gonna not believe this story, but let's get into it, Ken. Where sure. was your second trip? So my second trip was to Kawartha Highlands Provincial Park in Southern Ontario. And I entered the Long Lake Access let's Point. Let's show the folks, yeah, let's sure. show the folks where you went on that trip. So I entered the Long Lake Access Point and traveled down Long Lake and went into Buzzard Lake where I stayed overnight. And then the next day on the Saturday arose, arose and it was a beautiful day, sunny. I canoed down, went through a selection of lakes and portages, still very sunny. And I got to my site, 553, which was a western facing site. And I got there just before noontime and I was able to get everything set up. And that was a very nice leisurely and comfortable trip. That was on the May long weekend on yes. that Saturday yep. when just that big series of storms came from southwestern Ontario and just came right across the yep. province, right out through Ottawa. Parts of Ottawa and Quebec ended up being out without power for days and so on. It was an incredible storm. Yeah. And you were on the trip when that yes. happened. You're camped at Turtle Lake. Yeah. Let's tell the folks what happened. Well, this was, this was a, I had expected thunderstorms, um, nothing like this, nothing that I had ex, um, experienced anything quite like this. But I got to the site uh, just before noon, it was still sunny, around one o'clock clouds started, clouds started rolling in, then at two o'clock I could see a major storm system coming from the west, lightning, and you could start to hear the rain in the distance. And by 2.15, it was starting to rain, it was starting to get windy, and it was starting to blow. I was underneath my tarp, my canoe was tied to a tree, my tent was set up. I felt reasonably safe that everything was all packed away, ready for a thunderstorm. Then you the, even brought your canoe up and tethered it to a tree? Yes, I tethered it to a tree that was about that large in diameter. It was, um, I wanted it away from the water's edge just in case it was upside down. It was all set and prepared for uh, bad weather, but. And the bad weather certainly had. And then after it was starting to get really windy and rainy and then the storm, the storm front hit and my tarp collapsed on top of me. The rain and wind was so loud that you just couldn't, you couldn't hear anything other than just this, the noise of the storm itself. So when your tarps collapsed, it's pouring rain, you ended up moving at one point during the storm? Yes, so the tarp actually didn't survive that wind storm. Uh, it, it ripped the corner, so now all of a sudden I'm sitting on, on the picnic table in the full frontal attack of the storm. And I, so I got up, I moved over to a tree that was, uh, the, that was just, it was a nice large hardwood tree. I was just sort of blocking the wind and the rain with using that, that particular tree, not realizing what actually had happened with the tree that my canoe was tied to. Now you told me it was so loud, the storm, yep. when it really hit in full force, you couldn't comprehend yep. what was going on or it was just crazy. Yep. It, it was. Uh, when the storm hit, the, the wind and the rain just was so noisy. And when, even when I got up and moved, I didn't realize it. But the tree that the canoe had been tied to had actually broken off about 10 or 15 feet above the ground and landed on my tent and on the canoe. It was, uh, the canoe had been lifted up and blown around uh, using the rope as a tether, essentially, it was swung around the tree and as luck would have it, the tree broke off and landed on top of the canoe. And uh, your tent. And my tent, yes. And how long is that, was that like a five minute storm? It, yeah. Was it a short? It was, it was five, within five minutes, this all had happened within five minutes. And, and, and it just started, it just petered out very quickly, just stopped raining, the wind died right down and I look out from behind the one tree and I see this tree in my canoe 
up. Actually, it was only about eight feet away from me when it actually came down. That's how close and it was. And you didn't even hear I it. I didn't hear it. A tree, no. like a yeah. great big tree. A big maple tree came down and I, I didn't hear it. I saw that my tent had blown down, um, which probably saved it. But more to the point was I saw this tree inside my canoe, my new canoe. And I, Ken, what's <laughs> going through your mind? You're on a campsite, you're solo. Yeah. You're on a campsite. Yeah. A tree has landed on your canoe. Your tents collapse, your tarp shredded. What, what initially, what's going through your mind when something like that happens? It's a new canoe. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a new canoe. I couldn't believe it. I said, no, how, you know, I was doing everything I could do to, to, to protect myself and to, to be secure for the storm and this canoe. And I see this canoe, this tree in the canoe, and I'm going, okay. So I say, first things first, need to actually assess the situation. So I, I looked at the canoe. I saw that it was, it hadn't appeared that it, the actual tree had gone through the bottom of the boat. It didn't land on the gunnel of the boat on this side. It was on its sort of in this position. It was more like in this position here. And it had landed inside. It broke the, the uh, combi seat. It had broke the stern seat um, and was leaning, laying out across all the way. The tree itself was about a, a 30 foot tree. So we could show the folks the tree, the weight of the tree had just landed on this. Wow. So yeah. you, so literally this huge storm hits. Your first thought is my new canoe. <laughs> yes. You're serious? I'm, I'm serious. I, I, I just like, like, I just couldn't have planned it. It was like the tree landed on the canoe and landed on my tent. But more importantly, it landed on the canoe, and I actually, then I was thinking, okay, I have, to be, I have to really assess this because of the fact that I need to be able to get out. I'm still like four portages away. I'm down in the southwest corner of uh, Kortha Highlands Park. I've got to get out. Um, so I went through the process of analyzing what was damaged, what was not, and what needed to be done next. So that's what I focused on. So let's put the canoe down on the ground and let's go over. This is an extraordinary story, folks. Let's hear how you actually got the canoe out and what you did from there. Sure. So Ken, here's your canoe. A tree's yeah. in it. You're bewildered. You're worried about your new boat, but you realize you've got to get out. You're many portages yep. in and you've got to get out. So what, this is crazy. What did you do next? So the first thing I wanted to make sure of, I had noticed that there was no holes in the boat, in the bottom of the boat, which was great. I mean, I mean, a tree, huge tree landed on this and it was, there was no holes in the boat. So I was, I was first assessment was that it's salvageable from the standpoint of being able to get out. I then looked at, how the tree was laying in it. I cut off some of the smaller pieces that were, that had been splintered off when the tree broke. And I decided just above the, the stern of the boat, I was going to try, I took my saw that I had with me and I started to cut all the way around. I was thinking that if I could cut this portion off, I could just roll the port, part that was in the tree, uh, that part that was in the canoe out of the canoe itself. It was just, the tree was just too heavy. It was a 30 foot long tree. So there's no way I could move it. I tried prying it out. I just couldn't do it. So I saw it for a while. I realized that was not gonna work. So I reanalyzed where the tree was pinning the boat. And I recognized that it was pushing down here, but the gunnel portion had been captured essentially by the tree itself. It was under the weight of the tree. It was the under the weight of the tree. And fortunately, I was able to see that this was free from the, the gunnel. So I thought the simplest way, take the saw. <laughs> Don't do this at home, folks. To a brand new canoe. <laughs> a new canoe. Has a tree a new canoe. And I just basically, I cut on the one side and I cut the other side. And then I was able to then, with the boat, I had a large 
another large log. I was able to just to move just slightly and I was able to slide the boat out. The goal was not to damage the canoe any further so that I'd be able to get out from the, uh, from the park. This is so, amazing. So, so did the, the gunnel piece fall off when you pull it out or this looks like a pretty clean cut or did you cut that too or how uh, did No, that actually um, when the tree landed, it actually pulled the actual, and it's just tied down here, but it's actually pulled it away I mean, the, the impact was so great when the tree came down on top of it. So it actually pulled it away and it was actually bent. <laughs> so you just needed to get the gunnel off and yes. then you could slide it yeah. out. Yeah. And I just pulled, I was able to just uh, ooch it out a little bit and get it out from underneath the tree. Um, the piece was stuck underneath the tree. I, I left it there. I'm sorry. I just couldn't, I just couldn't get it out. Um, but fortunately the canoe came out and it's... So if you're on Turtle Lake on campsite number... 553. And there's a large maple tree there and you roll it over and you get this piece of gunnel, you can bring Please. it back to Swift and we're going to give you a reward for that. <laughs> <laughs> so now yep. you've, you've got the, you've pulled the canoe out. Yes. And then it's kind of flimsy though, when you don't have the seat supports and structure in it and you realize you have to pedal it out. And I see the string you have here. Yep. So what, what went through your mind next? Cause you still have to paddle out a great distance. Right. So what I was looking at was fortunately the seats and I will say this, the actual seats fixtures themselves, actually, the bottoms of them were still attached to a certain degree, to, to a small degree. So the seats themselves had been knocked, the fixtures had been, had been um, broken away. But what I did was I actually had a few extra lines and I actually tied the gunnel, wrapped the line around the seats, tied it actually onto the seats so that they wouldn't move. I did it for the, the stern seat and for the combi seat as well. The same thing happened there. Recognizing that I needed to paddle using the bow seat facing, uh, facing the stern. And so I was able to use, I was able to sit on the stern, or the bow seat, as well as the, uh, the thwart itself. And I was able to leave the removable yoke in place and which that creates some rigidity. Yes, which is I was I wanted I wanted to have the strength because my un, couple of unknowns was whether there was any leaks, micro cracks in the hull itself that would allow water to seep through, um, and secondly in the portage I wasn't sure how the boat was going to react. I mean, being in this condition uh, on portages, but handled great. Now you told me earlier before we did the interview that the storm had come. Yep. You'd had to get the canoe out, and there's actually two other groups camped way across on the other side of the lake, and you've yeah. had this incredible storm hit you. You've had your tree land on your canoe, and you see them out swimming and fishing and enjoying life in the park. Uh, yes, I was, I was worrying about getting out. Um, I had secured the canoe. I had spent time putting the canoe together so that it was, in my mind, was safe to be able to travel. And... The storm, as fast as it came in, it was over with. And then the sun came out later on in that day and the people were, and I was actually pleased to see the fact that the other groups were okay. So they were out, they were out, you know, swimming, fishing. <laughs> Enjoying um, life um, as the, if nothing had happened. The, the, the one thing that I found was that particular site, it's a nice site, it's, but it's facing west and it was open all the way down to the lake, except for a couple of trees. Um, and while that gives you a great view of the lake, it allowed, I could see the storm moving across the lake, coming towards me, and there was nothing so to it block its wind. Right in. It was yeah. nothing to block the wind. There was nothing to, to help to break it up at all. And that's what, uh, that's- So they that probably the had result. more protected sites. Yeah, they I've, were, yeah. I've been out on places like that at when crazy storms have hit, and it really makes a big difference. Yeah. And with now with the new system where you need to reserve the specific site, you can't choose if you get out there and if you know a storm's coming from a particular direction. 
No, I, uh, but That's again, this, uh, the storm itself was just amazingly powerful. So I, it's not what I was expecting. I don't think anybody was expecting it to be that strong. So. Now, did you paddle out that day? Like, did you gather all your gear together or did you spend one more night? Like, were you a bit shell-shocked and think, I just got to get the heck out of here? <laughs> How, what, did, what was your journey going out? So I, I intentionally stayed one more night. First off, I, when I checked my tent, the tent was fine. Um, it wasn't damaged. Um, and because it was around 4.30 in the afternoon, and even though I had some time, if I ran into a problem, I was worried that I wouldn't necessarily get out very easily. So I decided, okay, I'm going to stay one the night, stay put, get the boat ready, and then I would have the whole day to travel out. with. Uh, and if I ran into any problems, then I would be able to, you know, take my time and and work my way out of the uh, of the campsite uh, to the access point. It was uh, it started in the morning on Sunday. Um, I I had to go through essentially five portages. They were not long, um, so I started off early around six six thirty in the morning. Um, I put the boat the canoe into the water, uh, uh, paddled up from Turtle up to the portage that goes into Cherry. Uh, Cherry Lake, that's about a 280 meter portage. Um, and once I got on Cherry, I paddled through Cherry and through a river system that uh, connects Cherry over to Compass Lake. Um, and along that route, there was a couple of portages. Uh, one is, a, is over a, a kind of a stone dam, and that's only a 50 meter. And then there was another one that leads up from uh, river the the river from uh, Cherry Lake into the into Compass Lake and that was about 166 meter that was uh, uh, a steep uphill climb uh, and from once I got onto uh, onto um, Compass I just followed the river around and there was another set of two short portages that leads from uh, Compass into Lux Lake uh, and uh, at low water that could be a bit challenging and then you have well, it, it could be either a long portage but I lucked out I had a short 50 meter uh, portage followed by uh, uh, I was able to paddle the river and out and portaged up onto Lux Lake. Once I got onto Lux it's connected with Long Lake and I just had a long about an hour and a half paddle to the access point at Long Lake. It was it turned out to be just fine it was a bit slow um, because I had actually, I had a double, double paddle and it was broken in the, in the storm as well by the tree. So I was just paddling, uh, classic paddling and, um, I just took my time and took it easy and made sure the boat was, uh, still in good shape. I checked it over every, every portage, make sure everything was still secure. Well, did you, uh, did you have a spare paddle or did you use half the yes. kayak paddle? Too? No, I had spare paddle. I always take a spare paddle. Uh, the standard uh, classic paddle itself, as well as the double double blade. Now, did you run into anyone on the way out where they see you paddling up with a canoe that looks like this? Like, did uh, Yes, actually, I ran into two groups. One was a, a, a father and a daughter, and they, they were out fishing, and this was on Long Lake. And, uh, and I talked to them because they were there overnight and asked them how they have fared, and they... Uh, they said they were fine, and then when they saw the canoe, they were like, holy smokes, what the heck happened there? <laughs> um, so that was the one group. And then the, uh, the second group actually was the park wardens. Uh, they, were, they were on their way in to check on people on, in the lakes. And I explained what had happened and where it was, and they were like looking at the canoe thinking, holy smokes, you know, you came out with that? That's, that's great, you know, glad to see you're okay. So, um, but that's... Those were the only people that I ran across on the trip out, but they were like, wow. How about if we take the canoe down to the water, throw your pack in, and we show the folks how you paddled out? Sure. Okay, we can do that. Does that sound like fun? Sounds, sounds Let's do it. All right. <laughs> This is amazing. This boat is still structurally sound after the tree landing in it. 
Yeah. It's not leaking. Nope. Now you had a different setup with the string coming across because you had the seat supports and so on. Yes. Yeah. They were they were still still slightly attached on the inside, even though that they were broken. Uh, and I used line to wrap around the outside of the hull and actually tied onto the seats so that they would be stay in place. Um, I did that for this combi seat and for the stern seat. Um, so I basically turned the boat around for a couple of reasons. One, it would be easier to paddle. And secondly, I could keep an eye on what was going on in the bow as far as if there was any problems. This is extraordinary. So it's raining out today. It's appropriate. How about if you just show the folks a little bit how well it paddled even when it was like this? Sure. Beautiful. So Ken, what an experience. You went through all this. When, when it happened, you're at the campsite, there's other people on the lake. Did, did any point in time, did you think of just calling for help or trying to find a different way to get out of this? I really wanted to be able to do this on my own in case I ended up in a situation where I was truly on my own. So I thought to myself, just, just take one step at a time, analyze, figure it out. And after I had gone through the process and tied up the boat and everything like that, I, I felt that there was n at no time did I ever feel, I felt that it was necessary to, to call out for help. I so you yeah. didn't you didn't at any time feel panicked or just have extreme no. concern of like what's going to happen next? I mean, initially at the very when I saw what had happened, I was thinking, "Oh no, what now?" But I stopped, I slowed down and I just took it step by step and analyzed what was going on, what had happened, and what I could do. So if I really ran into problems, then I would have to have maybe gone and asked for help, but Everything worked out very well. When you first sent us the pictures of what had happened to you, and there was the picture of the tree and the canoe, I was thinking, oh my goodness. I couldn't imagine like having a composite canoe, a tree literally inside of it. The size of the tree is what amazed me too. Yeah. It's just, this is just such an extraordinary story. So thank you so much for sharing this. No problem, Bill. And I hope that people out there, they all listen in. And uh, if something like this happens to you, stay calm and figure it out. Cheers to you, Ken. Thank you, Bill. All Have right.